Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So I'm back with an update on this Titan fridge fan. So a little while ago I installed uh, several of the Titan fans. A couple that uh, go into the back side of the fridge where the cooling takes place in the, in the back enclosure. But this fan that they sent me out actually goes inside the fridge and it's designed to sit inside the fridge and just circulate the air within the fridge which helps keep uh, frost off your fins and also moves the air around for uh, more even cooling. Now the big problem with these is they didn't include batteries and they don't use regular alkaline batteries. What they need is a battery that's a lithium battery and the number is 18650. So they kind of leave it up to you, they don't include batteries. Um, and of course around here, maybe in other parts of the world they're easy to come by, but here they're mostly built into things, but they do come in little flashlights. So what I did is I went online and got myself a flashlight that came with eight batteries and then a little uh, charger that you could put them in to recharge them. So I thought, oh, that's going to be pretty good. I'll have a flashlight and a bunch of extra batteries. And this thing takes three batteries. So I tried it out and it didn't work so good. I think on the medium speed it's supposed to last 144 hours and I was getting more like maybe two days, maybe 40 hours. So probably these batteries are kind of junky. Um, probably would have to try to find better batteries. Um, and of course they're going to cost more so it starts to drive up the cost of this little fan quite a bit. So I don't know, it's kind of a cool little fan. It has three different speeds on it, low, medium and high. And uh, it's quite a nice little design. But this battery situation is kind of a real drawback. And I even noticed on a lot of the Amazon comments they were complaining about the, the battery problem here. So anyway, I've decided to solve that with a little mod. Now I have to give you a warning that uh, I'm not advocating this mod. Just kind of going to show you what I'm going to do and uh, you can decide for yourself because I'm taking a risk here. Of course it's going to void the warranty of this thing and also uh, you know it could be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. But anyway what I bought off Amazon these are called DC to DC buck converters and what it's going to do is I'm going to hook into the inside of the fridge into the fridge light you know the light that comes on when you you turn your fridge on and I'm going to put the power for I'm going to tap into that and put power into this little board here and then on the output of the board I'm going to be able to set this from the 12 volt RV power I'm going to be able to adjust it to put out 3.6 volts which is what the battery voltage is that the fan needs so I'm going to have to take this apart and I'm going to have to figure out where to where to solder in these wires so that I can power this little fan off this little converter board. Now I picked this one because it actually came with a nice little plastic enclosure. Looks like I have to build it. <clears throat> and also what I've done is on the back here where all the sensitive electronics is I've taken some conformal coating and I've coated it all because it's going to be in the fridge and uh, that's kind of a harsh environment that can be you know frost and stuff and there's moisture in there. Now I could locate this outside the fridge um, on the outside part and maybe run a wire in where the on mine where the thermistor wire goes but that would be kind of a pain. I think I'd have to pull the whole fridge out to accomplish that. So what I'm going to do is give this a try and see how it goes. Anyway, I'll just demo this little board here. Put an adjuster on it and everything. Let's turn on this power supply. And that fires up my board. I don't know if the camera is going to show this very well or not. But on here it has its own digital readout. And it will tell me what the input and the output voltage is. There's the output. And... There we go, right now it's outputting 13.68 and I can adjust the output just by turning this screw. There's this lower output or I can crank it up. So I'm going to set it right around 
13.6. Like I said, I don't know if the camera will pick this up very well or not. We're kind of outside here. Anyway, let me take this apart. <clears throat> I'll show you what's inside this thing. Okay, here's the guts of the little thing. There's the fan. Interesting. I have a sideways kind of squirrel fan in there. And we've got a controller board. I've taken off the lid. There's a, a power button there, and then there's a cable that goes from it and connects to the controller board there. On the front, we have a pair of LEDs. One is behind the button that lights up. And then there's also a second LED going up this light tube. And that uh, tells you which speed it is. I think it's blue and green and red. And then the button also goes down here and tells you which mode you're in. Uh, if the battery is too low, it flashes red telling you the battery is getting weak. And then on the other side is your battery hookups. So you got three, there's the positive, and then there's three negatives for each of the batteries. So I should be able to hook in my positive and combine these negatives. They seem to go into the board right there, and I can see three little small, I think they're diodes, probably protection diodes for the battery. But that should power me up, so I'm going to take my soldering iron and um, take this apart and solder in my wire. Probably run it through the side. Okay, let's give her a test. I guess I have this output set for 3.6 volts. It's probably making weird flashing because of the camera, but to my eye it's a solid 3.6 volts. And then over here, I've uh, soldered the, the black to the black and the red to the red. On the output here, plus is red, black is minus. And we should be able to just push the button here. The fan should come on. There we go. Yep. She's working. And this is still showing an output of 3.6 volts, which is nice because it's a regulated output. So, proof of concept is working. So I'm going to go uh, build its little case now, put it together. And I'll sew up this case and we'll have another test. Okie doke, here's my contraption. So this part here, I just took a drill and kind of hollowed out an area so I could run the wire out. And then the box was pretty easy to build. came with all the screws and everything. The only thing I had to put on was this uh, aluminum heat sink. There was a, a peel-off sticker and then you stuck it onto the, the regulator chip in there so everything's looking good I also just used some uh, mounting tape to tape to the bottom but that would be keep everything in one place turn it around here Let's give it a quick try before we head in to mount on the fridge looking good looking good 3.59 So this case exposes, there's holes so you can do the adjustments and also press the buttons on the front here. There's actually the amperage. So you can see even at max amperage we're only pull, pulling 0.24 so just a quarter of an amp, so not much power draw at all. I like these little droke modules too because they have built-in over temperature protection. They also have short circuit protection and all that kind of stuff. So if anything goes wrong with them, they'll just shut down themselves. But I won't have any, any problems. This thing won't even heat up at all because you think while well, you're putting that in the fridge, so <laughs> kind of defeating the purpose if it's heating up. But 
I'm going to run it a while and see if it heats up, but I don't think it's going to heat up at all at that very low amperage. It actually can take up to 5 amps, so I'm barely, barely uh, using any amperage at all. Worst case scenario, if it's if it runs warm, I'd have to actually move it outside the fridge, but I don't really want to go through that hassle, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, we'll go inside and I'll show you where I'm going to hook it up to the, the 12 volt that's inside the fridge that powers the, the door light. So here's the door switch. I just have the bulb out of its place right now and pulled the switch back. See when you close the door it closes that switch and then this is this hooks up to the switch right there. So I have 12 volts negative and positive right there. So I'm going to solder my negative black wire to there and then I'm just going to splice into one of these 12 volt wires here so I can get my positive 12 for my fan. Okay, so I just soldered the negative back there and I've spliced into this and I'm just going to give it a bit of tape and stick it back in that hole and reassemble the, the light here. It looks like we're doing good so far. There we go. Okay. Let's check the voltages here. So we still have 3.6 volts out. Right now we're off, so we're not having any amperage. That's protection amperage. You can set that so it, it won't go, if it goes above a certain amperage, it'll turn off automatically. And that's our input voltage. And then this is a, a cycling. Let's turn the fan on there. So this is on high. Yeah, so on high it draws about a quarter of an amp. Let's go to the medium speed. This is more what I'm going to be running it at. You can see it kind of cycles on and off in this one. There, I just heard it come on. And then there is actually a, a really low speed as well. Probably set it up in the corner somewhere like that and probably on the medium speed like that yeah I can hear it intermittently comes on and off I'll have to play around with it and see and also kind of dress my wires see how where I'm gonna put it but I think down in the bottom corner will probably be good Okay, well hopefully that's going to work out well for me. Uh, if you missed uh, my installation of the fridge fans that go behind the fridge, I'll give you a link to this uh, post with a couple videos of installing the fridge fans. And also there was a vent fan. I'll also link to the this little fridge fan. Um, you can check it out. You can see it doesn't have the greatest ratings because of the battery issue. But it's kind of a cool little fan. Um, you can see... Uh, the different amounts of hours you can get on it so in the max flow it would only be 24 hours before the batteries were would be exhausted so that's another reason I wanted to hook it into the 12 volt part of the of the RV and this is the little uh, DC to DC buck converter that I picked up there's all kinds of different ones on Amazon that you can go through but I just I just like the fact that it had the, the neat little case so everything would be nicely enclosed in there so we'll see how it goes. If I have a problem with it, I'll report back. Till next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers, guys.